how do you see startups going out and building trust? Like what is, what is the factor? Cause it's, it is so critical if you're, you're talking about people's money, right? So yeah. you know, when you're talking about when there's money involved here, like people obviously take that seriously and there's already a distrust of financial institutions for decades. If you look at pretty much any country in Latin America, what are yeah. the things that have been effective there? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it, I think it's a combination of things um, that can be effective. Uh, and I think it really is dependent on um, the the startup and whether you're sort of a pure fintech play, whether you're, as we talked about, the embedded finance play and you're starting from a different place with customers. Um, and I think that's an important point in terms of just where you're starting with customers um, and the, the stickier your product can be sort of the more you can actually resonate with customers and and build up. So I would say a strategy that I think is generally effective in businesses is just to start with with a wedge, right? Like the first product that's going to get your customers, it's going to A, like allow you to understand your customers better, B, start to gather, you know, more data on them from from a more, from the perspective of wanting to understand them um, and understanding what their, what their behaviors are, um, but also being able to personalize afterwards, you know, right, like products for them and for their needs. Um, I think oftentimes, like what we've seen is that, you know, financial institutions don't take the time to build for a specific customer, a specific customer need. So I think part of it is marketing and the way that you actually speak to customers, right? Like really understanding who your customer, your target customer is, who are those personas, like meet them where they are, speak to them in the language that resonates with them um, because that hasn't been done, right? Historically. So as soon as a brand of, or a you know, an, an institution or a, a different startup kind of comes and speaks your language, um, that's going to be a, a really big differentiator just in terms of getting customers to pay attention and to actually be able to start building that that loyalty. So I think it's a combination of like, A, marketing um, and speaking to customers in a language that they understand and, and that meets them where they're at. So understanding their needs and B, actually building out products and services that uh, resonate with them, you know, whether it's, and I think this is where those like verticalized or niche or, you know, specialized products um, become interesting because that's when you really feel like the customer feels like the product is made for them. And then it's going to be that much harder for them to find something similar um, and or to leave you right for, for any of that reason. So I think um, it's it's partly sort of understanding your customer, meeting them where they're at, um, building products that are that are right for them. Um, and also, I think building with the customer in mind, right? Because I think at the end of the day, yeah, a business can be focused on, right? Like like being profitable and how do you grow quickly and how do you 10X your revenue? But at the end of the day, what you really need to do is, is build with your customer in mind. Um, and that's what's going to allow you to, to really sort of enable growth. So, you know, I think doing right by your end user, um, I think it pays off much more than sort of taking shortcuts um, for that short-term sort of profitability or revenue um, at the sacrifice of the customer. So if I look at this lens that you described, if I look at Nubank through this lens, I mean, every single point you mentioned, they just delivered like amazingly well, right? Yeah. They met their customers where they're at, they, they, they were able to focus on a wedge by having mm -hmm. a credit card that was better. The marketing was brilliant. The communication was brilliant and, yeah. and the brand experience. And so, I think that allowed them to open up, you know, ancillary services beyond that. And uh, so it's a, it's a perfect case study to describe what you, you think is important. And, and I would wholeheartedly agree. I like that. So that's where your advice on starting out, let's ask the question of how did Fonte start and talk a, a bit more about what you're trying to achieve here. Yeah, definitely. So Fontes is QED's latest fund um, focused solely on Latin America. Um, and it's, I would say the earliest we've we've focused on at QED. So QED historically, you know, our core fund um, is mostly sort of seed to Series B, but we end up focusing on on Series A mostly. Um, Fontes is actually sort of pre seed to seed, um, a lot you know smaller investments, kind of much earlier stage. Um, and the idea here was, um, you know, you mentioned QED. Uh, has been present in Latin America for a while. Our first investment was actually New Bank um, in 2014. And so over the past sort of seven years, we've seen the evolution of, of fintech um, and we've seen sort of the opportunity to actually sort of uh, do something at the earlier stages, right? Like as we've seen more entrepreneurs, as we've seen the evolution of business models, um, I think 
you know, there's an opportunity for us to sort of extend the the work that we're already doing in terms of, you know, covering um, and meeting entrepreneurs at an earlier stage. But I think it's also partly a recognition that fintech is evolving in terms of the types of business models and and kind of comes in all shapes and sizes to a certain extent. Um, and so Fontes wants to be able to sort of be at the forefront of that evolution um, and start to understand, you know, business models that maybe weren't, aren't sort of core payments, core lending, core banking um, that QED has historically invested in and more sort of understanding, okay, what are some of those embedded finance opportunities or what are some of those um, kind of tangential models that are relevant to fintech, but not necessarily pure fintech um, where Fontes can start to make sense. So to an extent, it's sort of pushing our boundaries from QED's perspective of, you know, what we invest in types of business models, geographies, I would say, um, you know, we, we've we historically mostly invested in Brazil and Mexico. Um, with Fontes, we're hoping to be able to, you know, invest in more of Latin America as well and start to get to know other ecosystems. Um, and so it's, it's partly um, sort of trying to be at the forefront of that ecosystem evolution. Um, I would also say, you know, one of the things that I love most about Fontes is the way that it's structured is essentially, um, you know, part of our capital. So it's a $12 million fund. Part of that capital comes from entrepreneurs um, and sort of founders in the region, you know, some of whom are from our portfolio companies, others who are, you know, successful entrepreneurs um, that are contributing to Fontes um, as a way to also sort of help shape the ecosystem. And so I think a founder that receives an investment from Fontes has sort of the best of both worlds because you have kind of access to QED's global fintech expertise, but also you have sort of the local know-how of founders and entrepreneurs that sort of have um, built something already or have had the experience and can act as sort of, to an extent, mentors or advisors to to the portfolio companies. So I think it's, you know, the, the idea here was to sort of create a community, um, help shape the ecosystem, and also sort of recognizing that, you know, we want to be at the forefront of the next kind of wave of fintech business models and evolution.